On March 3rd, Meerkat Finance launched with a massive staking program. Investors who didn't want to miss out on the seemingly unmissable returns quickly locked in $31 million in capital. 14 hours after launch, Meerkat announced on its telegram that hackers had stolen all of the user funds, when in reality, they had just exit scammed. Subsequently, Meerkat deleted their socials and shut down their websites. This would go on to be called the largest rug pull in decentralized finance. But two days later, a developer informed users that the money was safe and they would all be refunded. This is the story of Meerkat.finance, the $31 million social experiment, testing the limits of human greed. So how exactly did Meerkat manage to scam users out of so much money? See, while it may seem like Meerkat was an obvious Ponzi scheme, it was actually something called Decentralized Finance, or DeFi for short. Well, you could argue that DeFi is a Ponzi scheme in itself, but theoretically it's perfectly safe, where yields over 1000% APY are normal, if you know where to find them. Let me explain. Ethereum is a platform where anyone can create and use decentralized smart contracts, allowing for a variety of uses, such as lending and borrowing money all without a middleman. But in February, Ethereum began suffering from its own success. Because the network can only process around 30 transactions per second, the network was getting congested, driving gas fees to unusable prices. Because of this, more people began migrating over to the Binance Smart Chain, a clone of Ethereum, but with 100 times cheaper fees. And with it, the decentralized applications had to move as well. Yearn.Finance is a popular app on Ethereum that allows users to use leverage while yield farming to maximize returns. But there is no such platform on the Binance chain yet. So, Alpaca.Finance forked Yearn and made it more suitable for the Binance smart chain. Meerkat would later fork Alpaca, so it's important we look at Alpaca first. Anyways, what is leveraged yield farming? Let's say you have some money and want to invest it to earn some passive income, a process known as yield farming. You could take your money and put it into a liquidity pool and earn around 100% APY. Of course, there are some risks involved as you can lose money through impermanent loss. But let's say you are confident in your LP holding a steady ratio and think that you will be profitable. Well, instead of earning 100% APY, you can make 300% APY by borrowing twice the amount of your investment through leverage. Now you bear three times the risk, but three times the reward. And on the other side, lenders would lend you this leveraged capital, and you pay them interest. Alpaca created the perfect platform to do this, and it was all decentralized and secure. Alpaca launched on February 7th with what it called Phase 1. At this stage, it only implemented the lending aspect and not borrowing. The devs wanted to ensure that when it launched the actual leverage, or phase two of the project, the vaults would be stacked with enough capital to provide the yield farmers with. So how exactly does Alpaca incentivize users during phase one to supply money? Meet the Alpaca token, the native token of the Alpaca protocol. Users can stake their Alpaca and receive X Alpaca, which can be used to vote on changes to the Alpaca protocol, where one X Alpaca equals one vote. So the more Alpaca you have, and the longer you hold it, the more voting power you accrue. And when a yield farmer pays interest on a leveraged position, a portion of that money goes into buying alpaca and burning it, decreasing the total supply of the token and therefore raising the price. You can think of the alpaca token as the stock of the company. Just like alpaca, if you own shares of Apple, you can vote on key issues. And every year, Apple spends billions of dollars in stock buybacks where it buys its own stock and removes it from the market, which rewards investors by increasing the stock price. So just like stocks, the value of Alpaca is dependent on the success of the protocol. The more people who use Alpaca, the more valuable the token is. Public companies distribute their stocks through a process called an initial public offering, where they sell their stock and raise money for their company. However, as DeFi is meant to be decentralized, this process would be unfair, as it would give the tokens to a handful of wealthy people. Instead, 
DeFi protocols choose to distribute their governance token through a fair launch. In this case, Alpaca chose to give 10% to themselves, 4% for strategic capital, and the rest to the community. Over a period of 35 months, anyone who lends or borrows through the Alpaca protocol will be rewarded with bonus Alpaca tokens. So this token is how we reward users in Stage 1 for providing money to the treasury. Usually, lenders would stake their funds and receive interest from the borrowers plus some bonus alpaca. But because there are currently no borrowers, this rate of return would be zero. Instead, alpaca decided to create a bonus period, where borrowers can earn seven times the usual amount of alpaca for staking their funds. In Stage 1, you can deposit Binance USD, a stablecoin worth $1, Binance Coin, the official currency for the Binance Smart Chain, or alpaca liquidity pool tokens and earn alpaca as a reward for doing so. You can then withdraw your funds later to claim your original investment back plus any of the alpaca you earned. It's basically free money. And alpaca grew to become a huge success. In its first 12 hours, it had amassed $40 million in deposits, with investors rushing to get in. See, 140 tokens would be distributed per block which is around 3 seconds. So investors want to get in as quickly as possible to snag the highest rates of returns before more people get in and dilute the rewards. But what justifies the $40 million in investments? Even before any leverage services were released, investors saw huge potential for the project, which drove the price of Alpaca up through speculation. This all created an insane rate of return, leading to the $40 million in investments. Over time, as the project gained publicity, the total value locked reached 250 million, and the rewards diluted to around 100% APY, as we see today. Something more reasonable. But if you were early, you would have gotten upwards of 10,000% APY that lasted for a few weeks. Wait, but isn't this just a Ponzi scheme? How is money being created out of thin air? Again, this is the magic of DeFi almost a Ponzi scheme. Technically, the value comes out of the Alpaca project itself, which provides utility value by existing on the blockchain. The team behind Alpaca spent a lot of time creating a good application, which then gives their token value, which is then distributed as this free money. One month later, Meerkat.finance comes along, takes the source code, which is open source on the blockchain, changes the mascot from an Alpaca to a Meerkat, changes the color scheme from green to red, and launches. They don't even deny it, and they call themselves a fork of alpaca finance with some more innovative features. But it doesn't even matter. Investors who felt left behind from alpaca rushed in to farm the meerkat token. And just like that, 31 million in user funds disappeared overnight. Apparently, these new innovative features included a function to exit scam all the funds. The vault, which is supposed to hold all the Binance USD and Binance coin, is emptied. Additionally, the value of Meerkat plunges to zero, and all the investors are left with nothing, as everything goes dark. How was Meerkat able to run away with the funds? Looking at the blockchain, we can see that the devs called the upgrade2 function, which changed the code of the Meerkat smart contract to a different proxy contract, allowing them to drain the funds one minute later. However, this dangerous function is protected by the if admin flag, meaning only the admin can call the function. And when Meerkat was launched, the address of the admin was changed from the developer wallet to a smart contract called a time lock. Meerkat was supposed to be trusted because they had time locked their contract at launch, meaning they gave up their admin access. But if we look closer, we can see that this supposed time lock never really happened. The function admin returns the admin slot variable, and this admin slot variable was changed to the time lock by calling the change admin function, which calls the set admin function. But if we look at the set admin function, we can see the exploit. Instead of changing the admin slot variable, it actually changes a different variable with a 0 instead of an O. So the admin was never changed and was still just the address of the dev wallet. 
This is the zero worth $31 million. Shortly after, a mod creates a thread on the Binance forums for users to report more information on the scam, although he admits that it will be nearly impossible for Binance to catch the thieves, given the decentralized nature of the blockchain. But unlike Ethereum, the Binance chain is relatively centralized. It consists of 21 validators, many of which are owned by Binance themselves, with the rest owned by trusted groups that have some connection with Binance. Theoretically, Binance could use its power to alter the blockchain and transfer funds from Meerkat back to its users. But this would seriously degrade trust in the chain, even if Binance had good intentions. Binance has turned a blind eye to previous rug pulls, and this time is no different. There was even a controversial game called Tanks of Tiananmen developed to trigger Chinese authorities. But Binance has yet to be pressured by China to censor the blockchain. So it looks like all the money is lost for good. But out of the darkness, a hero emerges in a telegram channel called Meerkat Refunds. He calls himself Jambu, one of the developers for Meerkat, and assures everyone that they will get their money back. 30 minutes later, the dev wallet swaps 0.1 BNB for BUSD, just like he had stated, proving that Jambu really does have access to the Meerkat private key. Over the next few weeks, he provides instructions for a new smart contract created to refund users. Everyone gets their money back, and it all ends happily ever after. So what was the point of Meerkat Finance? The developers could have easily run away with the money, yet they chose not to. From the very beginning, Meerkat's code was malicious, but it's a good thing their intent was never to cause harm. It looks like Meerkat was created as a social experiment, and the developers probably did not expect to see this level of success. Chambu writes that Meerkat is a project that tests users' greed and subjectivity. Meerkat does not entice users and investors to participate. And he's right. Meerkat merely copied an existing project and provided zero extra utility. They never actually got around to showing their supposedly new innovative features as they never released Phase 2. But none of this mattered to investors, who will ape into any new project with a fear of missing out. Meerkat perfectly highlights the stupidity of this aspect of DeFi. Next, Meerkat warns users to be more careful with smart contracts. Code is law, and one zero can change everything. Usually, projects get audited by a trusted third party before launching them and Meerkat actually warned users that it hadn't been audited yet. Any auditor would have spotted the faulty code. But amidst the rush to make a quick buck, nobody realized it before it was too late. DeFi is essential, but it has a lot of flaws. It is flourished by human greed, 